This story began 1,000 years ago, when I noticed that mechanics was dying and that its legacy was leading far from the truth. I unveiled my secrets. I decided to bring them to light, and I ordered them into chapters that explained them and into drawings that illustrated them, so that their realization is simple for an intelligent craftsman. They are 31 and they are devoid of errors. 21 are clocks. Two are designed by my predecessor. I have explained them and I have put them in order for you to observe and create them. You will see the wonders of their functioning and you will reveal the mystery of their secrets. With these words, Igna Halef Abnaralde, a scientist from the 11th century, began the Book of Secrets in Cordoba. His manuscript was copied also in Andalusia, in Toledo, in 1266, and has reached our time. The only copy left in the world of the Book of Secrets is kept in the Medicean Library of Florence. It has an inestimable value because it introduces descriptions and designs of many ingenious devices comprising mechanical apparatus, water clocks, automatic calendars, and war machines. It is very important historically as it is one of the first written and designed testimonies of the complex mechanisms of ancient history and has never been studied and disclosed. The manuscript was rediscovered by Massimiliano Lisa of Leonardo III during research work on the ancient technology before Leonardo da Vinci while reading a text by the science historian Donald Hill who, in 1976, quoted the Book of Secrets, defining it as crucially important and urged students to get interested in it. His invitation was accepted 32 years later. The sponsorship of the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Amar bin Khalif al Thani has allowed the financing of an entire working and studying team that, after months of research, has obtained exceptional results. The complexity of the manuscript had prevented the experts until yesterday to interpret it. Thanks to the competences and the technologies of the Italian Research Center Leonardo III in Milan, the manuscript has been transcribed and translated for the first time in history. But above all, every machine has been interpreted and reconstructed the first phase was that of the analysis of the original at the Laurentian Medicean Library in Florence. The antique volumes were reserved to the scholars to be consulted. Therefore, in order to make the pages accessible to the greater public, Leonardo III realized a high-definition digital photograph of every single sheet using the best technology available. It is in a process that gives results deriving from the quality and resolution of the shots but also from the wise positioning of the lights and the experience of the photographer, Roberto Bigano. The result is exceptional and the blow-ups permit to appreciate more details than those visible with the naked eye on the manuscript itself. The second step was the transcription of the original text and its translation into Italian, English and French. Two translating teams, first in Italy led by Yolanda Guardi, and the second scattered in Egypt, France, and the United States, led by Hamed Regab, have carried out this important task, rendered more difficult by the fact the manuscript was damaged and devoid of a portion of the text in nearly every page. Starting from the text and an accurate analysis of every single drawing, Mario Tadei and Eduardo Zenan of Leonardo III have interpreted every machine. The job was more complicated than expected, not only because of the lack of text, but also due to the fact that being a copy there were errors made by the scriber, both in the text and in the drawings. Then there was the issue that all the figures are schemes. In the year 1000, perspectives were not used yet. The positioning of the elements in space was hardly ever the right one. Due to the lack of perspective, depth ought to be recreated. The analysis work on the machines was made on the computer using software for three-dimensional graphics, animation, and simulation, which allowed designing all the pieces and see them in function. It consists of the application of modern design technology to understand and verify how the machines functioned in antiquity. Therefore, it has been possible to understand the models and to reconstruct them in 3D thanks to continuous feedbacks between model and text. Once a mechanical or geometric hypothesis was generated, the construction was attempted, the functioning verified and matched again with the text. This process is iterative for each component and must be restarted at each fault step or incongruity until the machine is created and functions respecting the text with just a minimum degree of freedom. Obviously, more hypotheses are possible for the reconstruction, 
and the final one is chosen based on the simpler and most correct functioning. The digital reconstruction is followed by that of two physical models in a reduced scale, the fortress demolisher and the clock with three characters. Everything was carried out within the model workshop of Leonardo III, thanks to the work of about 15 people. For the fortress demolisher, something like 3,000 small bricks have been made by hand. The reconstruction commenced from a wood structure, simulating a true medieval tower. Even the arches are bearing. The inner paving is in wood. The construction of a tower was attempted by making it the most precise and realistic as possible in order to recreate effectively its destruction, arranging correctly the bricks fallen around the machine. The finishing touches of the extensible mechanical battering ram are detailed and it was realized so that all the mechanisms were functioning. Even if for preservation exigencies, the exhibited model is static. One of the main references used was the naval engineering of the year 1000. The sketch is a simplified representation with all of the main elements on the same level. In the center, the marked line represents the battering ram to which two ropes are attached and can be seen reaching from above and from the lower part of the center. The four scissors-like structures are placed around the center base and are made up of six elements, each that are represented by two parallel lines. The study of the model requires also a sheet pertaining to another similar machine. Here it is possible to see the base structure, the wheels that touch the ground, and the position of those connected to the structure. The assault machine uses a mechanical structure to create a mobile battering ram that moves from a height. A four scissors system allows the advanced plan to raise itself until it reaches the desired height. This occurs by setting the four rail mechanisms in action. The upper level is initially hidden by the walls and reveals, when rising, a large battering ram. The battering ram is very heavy and balances with a system of ropes that permits oscillation. Another rope and pulley system manages the movement. When pulling a couple of ropes from below, the battering ram moves backwards and is then released in order to collide against the walls in front. The physical reconstruction has demonstrated that this machine really worked. The second physical model is the clock with three characters. The figure of the machine is practically intact. Two tanks in the higher part can be noticed, as well as the big main wheel and the secondary gears. In the lower part, the two mercury scales that control the movement of the two male characters are visible. The characters are not clearly drawn. At the strike of every hour, they animate and interpret a scene. The first one to move is the seated man with the astrolabe in his hand, which turns his head towards the woman located on the door threshold. The standing man moves towards the woman and when he reaches her, a pebble falls from her mouth into the man's hand. With the pebble in his hand, the man returns to the original position and lets the pebble fall in the container. The number of pebbles indicates the time. Instead, the inverse movement is controlled by a mercury scales that, tilting over on the opposite side, brings the head back to the original position. The big upper wheel, divided in 12 sections, lets a pebble fall at every hour. This pebble goes through a small tube located in the woman's nape so that when her mouth is opened, it falls in the man's hand. The mouth opening mechanism is operated by a bar located on a sort of carriage that moves the man too. When the bar meets the cord connected to the woman's jaw, the mouth opens and the pebble falls. When the man moves away, counterweights move the jaw back to its original closed position. The man is located on four-wheeled carriage moving on rectilinear rails. The movement is activated by a pebble that falls every hour on a plate positioned on a mercury scale. When the latter begins to tilt, the man moves. The cord that joins the scale to the carriage on which the man is standing is long and is responsible for moving his arm. A weight, located at the center of the machine, keeps the rope tense, preventing it from drooping. The most difficult sight of the reconstruction was to insert all the mechanical elements correctly in a limited space. Even the simplest movements hide mechanisms rendered more complicated by the synchronized movements of the many elements. The combination of cold mechanisms that had to remain hidden and the beauty of the part visible to the spectators is particularly fascinating. In order to introduce the Book of Secrets to the greater public, Leonardo III has realized this exhibition and has planned every element of it. 
In the first place, in order to allow the public to browse through the Book of Secrets directly, a digital interactive manuscript has been created by using the L3 Digital Codex technology, which had already been used by Leonardo III for the Leonardo da Vinci manuscripts obtaining a worldwide success. All the machines are animated, and it is sufficient to touch a figure to see its 3D interpretation appear, making it immediately comprehensible. By touching the text, it is possible to read the translations or the transcription. The chosen interface is L3 Flat Table Technology, based on horizontal touchscreens in high definition. One position is instead based on the holographic projection combined with the touchscreen, high definition in this case too. Every single element has been studied ad hoc, and advanced technologies and methodologies have been used. Another absolute innovation is the digital restoration of the manuscript. The pages have been cleaned up and reconstructed, and the lacking parts of the drawings have been added, in the same way lacking parts of text have been highlighted with dots. An edition comprising a casket with a book, available in Arabic, English, French, and Italian, facsimile and a DVD-ROM concur to the diffusion of this work throughout the world. The entire project and the exhibition are financed by the Qatar Museum's Authority, directed by Abdullah Arnijar. Already a thousand years ago, inventors and engineers succeeded in making incredible self-acting machines work, laying down the basis of modern mechanics. In many cases, these were true works of art. It is a universe in wide part still to be discovered.